Today's service job is going to be the JWR M2, JWR John Wolf Racing. We're going to do some other sets. There was a mock-up of the M1 Mobile and there was a mock-up of the M3 Diplomat Base Station. But I presume they went out of business before it all happened and the only set I've been aware of in the last 35 years was this 1981 M2. Now there's three sets here. These are company property that have come in over the years in batches of stuff. One of the snags is they've got a multi mixer synthesizer, which uses a general purpose synthesizer IC. If I remember rightly, it's the same chassis as the ICOM ICB1050 and the Signal 1001. And maybe some others. Because they're difficult to set up, you often find that these perform very poorly. Once they're set up, they seem to perform very well indeed. I remember sending Mark um, G7NDJ on some field tests in Nottingham. I was here at the base station, 35 miles away. Sent him up a hill um, this side of Nottingham in the mobile with the nine foot quarter wave whip. And he'd taken 10 random radios with him for evaluation. And he was in st under strict instructions not to tell me which one they were. And so when I wrote the reviews, to my surprise, the transmitted clarity of the 10, the best was the JWRM2. So they can't be that bad. Um, so what? Which one shall we do? Um, I'm going to look at the serial numbers. When you've got stickers on like this, it means that um, one of the engineers here has already had a quick look. This one with the wires dangling out has got no sticker on, so it's never been evaluated. The one with the red sticker doesn't work. The one with the amber sticker kind of works. I suppose an amber sticker works in this organisation. Well, we may as well do the one that kind of works. So we'll strip it down and see what needs doing. OK, that's taken the lids off and that certainly looks like it's complete. I said it already has been evaluated by another engineer here to make sure it kind of does something. I'm going to look through our box of odds and bits and pieces of microphones because you never know, there may be a JWR microphone in the box of mics. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, back to the initial setup on these. First of all, we're going to set the VCO. Sorry about the background noise, I've had to put the air conditioning on in the workshop. It's one of those days. Uh, the radio is basically working as the other engineer had said. Now, what we need to do is, looking at the synthesizer IC, which is a Motorola MC145106, just there, I'll point it out with the yellow tool if I could find one. Ah, yes, it's there, that one. And the VCO is adjusted by putting your pin of an electronic voltmeter, in other words a high impedance meter, preferably a digital one, on pin 8. So the ident there on the chip, which we'll just zoom in on, indicates point 1, pin 1. So, that's pin 1, so pin 8, with it being an 18 pin device, is next to the end there. So with the negative to chassis, and mine's just dropped off, what we should have is 5 volts on the meter. And I've actually got 5 volts. I'll just move these across so you can hopefully see the meter and the radio. Like that. So putting that back onto pin 8,
like that, I've got 4.99 toddling 5 volts. All these cores are filled with wax, of course you need to melt those with your soldering iron. Now that is spot on, that's exactly on channel 20, the VCO voltage is 5 volts, and it's the transformer to my left here, which is transformer 202, which is the VCO. And when we're going to transmit, it should also be 5 volts. We're going to transmit now, it's 4.98. 4 so in, on this case, the radio doesn't need adjusting. So it's pin 8 of the synthesizer IC, and it's adjusting the VCO coil T202 for 5 volts on transmit and checking it's 5 volts on receive. And that's done on channel 20. So that's the VCO set up. The next thing we have to do is to set up the 10.24 master oscillator or the synthesizer. And this is done on the end of this probe I've got a frequency counter. The 10.24 reference crystal is connected between pin 3 and 4 of the synthesizer chip IC201. If I put that on pin 3 I should have 10.24. In actual fact it was slightly low and just off camera I've adjusted it with CT203 so it's between, you're looking at pin either pin 3 or 4 with your frequency counter and then you adjust 10.24 exactly with the trimmer capacitor CT203 what this now enables us to do is to go into transmit so we now do and to adjust the right hand trimmer here CT202 which is the 16.96125 transmit mixer crystal for the desired frequency of transmit which in this case on channel 20 is 27 decimal 79125 which we'll now do now it's pretty high not it, it wouldn't make a difference really to performance but at the moment it's 2779138 so we'll just pull that down slightly and this is what makes these sets topsy turvy because if you get that 10.24 wrong or you set the transmitter using the 10.24 you end up with the receiver going lopsided now we're set up for transmit on 27 decimal 79125 and of course we'll come to receive later now what we need to do is to go through the uh, we've got 3.2 watts on this radio so I'd like to pull that up a bit and although all these are still factory sealed I will just go through it with you but it's a bit laborious because you've got to melt all the wax in the, uh, in the coils with your soldering iron right so we'll go for first of all we'll go for T207 and that's down there See all the smoke going towards the camera. Don't want to have the camera coughing. Right, that's that one done. Two o eight is next. Fine. 209 is next. So far, we've gained no more yet. And then T301 this is a plastic core, so I'll be very careful with this soldering on.
I'm actually looking at the ammeter on the power supply for that because it was so minute that I've just uh, done it on the for current. So that's covered that. So next we're T303. Still doing 3.3 .3 watts. Still no change. Three oh five. That's just brought it up to uh, three point four watts, and then finally three oh seven. Another go at that. Use a yellow tool, I think. Just screwed three and a half out of it. So I'd now go back to the penultimate one. And again, because they are interactive to some degree. As I've said many times before, this is a, the test set I'm using is a commercial professional two way radio one. So, what are real watts on here? can differ greatly from what I would call good buddy watts. So this is 3.6 watts, that's how it is. In fact the power supply has just crept up a fraction, I'll just check it again. Yes, 3.6 watts. It's always going to differ from sample to sample and um, this probably equates to about 7 good buddy watts, but it's doing 3.6. Right, um, that's with intolerance, and the next thing we need to do is to see what the meter on the radio says. So what I'm going to transmit should be in the centre of the red zone. And do you know what? It is. Now to adjust the TX meter, when I find my bearings, it's RV302 there to the right. We're not going to adjust it, it's already spot on. Now the radio is equipped with a high low power switch, the low power should do 0.4 of a watt and that was in line with the MPT1320 specification at the time which required you to attenuate to your transmit by 10 decibels if your base station area was above 7 meters local ground height. That rule got abolished um, later on uh, in the 80s or the early 90s when the next spec came out but the high-low power switches are useful to have and so we'll just set that up. It should be 0.4 of a watt, it's actually 0.2 of a watt and to adjust that it's RV301 which is just there. So RV301 And that's now 0.4 of a watt, which is exactly what we want. Okay, that just leaves us now with deviation. So let's have a look. I'll just get the oscillator we use. Switch that on. And that should be around about a maximum of between 2.2 and 2.5. Right now it's 2.1, that's spot on. We'll give it the whistle test. It's actually a bit low. 
so deviation is RV 303 which is the preset there in the middle wallow that's it we're set so that's it the JWR M2 VCO and transmit adjustment.